Right, timber's arrived. I'm going to be putting a double lap fence, double boarded fence up here. My spray gun's packed up. It sort of did one line, but it's dead. So I'm going to have to improvise with rocks. Be post there, post there, post there. One in between there, two at the end there, another one there. There's old concrete posts in here, so I'm going to try and avoid them. Started digging. You want about a quarter of the post into the ground. And these are eight foot posts, so I need to go in 18 inch to two foot, something like that. When you're digging, anything in the garden really. If you want foundations, you've got this black soil on top. And then you start going into this yellowy stuff, the rocks, you might have clay, but you want to get down there into that, ideally. I have post diggers with a point on, they're good. I've got this pointy thing, it's a rough neck bar, that's really good for getting through roots and rocks, trenching shovel, and a big chunky bar. This roughneck bar is alright for cutting through stuff, but you don't really want to leave her with it. But this one's got a point on the bottom and a bar on the top, a flat bar on the top. And of course, a shovel. I need to get these holes dug. Ideally, you want a flat bottom, straight sides, flat bottom. So if you have a rounded bottom, it's just going to wobble over an egg on its end. That's annoying. I'll put some rocks in place and string line will tell me it's going straight. And I've stacked the wood so that it's in some kind of order and then there's a short fence going across here just three foot high. This one's going to be six foot high. So I'll be using the four inch posts there, uh, three rails on each post, and then these six foot palings. All the posts are going to get concreted in. I've got a bad back and a concrete mixer, so I mix my own and pour it in. You can use post mix, but it's seven or eight quid a bag and you only get a little bag. And I don't always trust that it goes in everywhere. So it's easier for me and a bit cheaper to mix my own. The sun's out, but the clouds are out as well. Alright, not doing too bad. I might open that one up a bit. And I was going to go just there, concrete all the way that way. So I've got one there. Got one there. One there. But this one, I think this is a an old cobble or something. Might be the curbstone. Glad I've got that.
right there all in. They're about oh, just over a foot wide, two foot deep, approximately. These two that I thought were going to be the hardest turned out to be the easiest. Quite now at the top, but I've tried to open them out at the bottom because the fence won't fall over that way, it'll go one way or the other that way. So I'll be able to get some concrete on either side. I shouldn't have to cut these posts, but if you do, I put the, the cut end down. So you notice when a fence breaks, it always breaks off at ground level, six inch below, six inch above. That's because it's the bugs, microbes and things that need oxygen to, to live. And down there, down in the ground, it's hermetically sealed. There might be moisture, but there's no oxygen, so they don't live down there. If you put the cut end to the top, it's not treated because that treatment on there only goes in 5-10 mil. It might soak in a bit on the end. But yeah, put the cut end down. You can treat it if you want, but quite often you end up with a stump of wood in the ground, rotted off at the bay, at the ground level. Uh, I've got these posts roughly in. I need to put some stakes in these, then I can pull them plumb that way. The plumb that way at the moment. The string lines back in, so they're up to the string line at the bottom. Then there's going to be middle rail and the bottom rail. I'm having to follow the lie of the land because you don't want any gap at the bottom so I can't put it nice and straight so it might have a bit of a kick in the middle. It lifts up a little bit at this end. Bushes are in my way so I'm having to make that up as I go along. These I'm half lapping. Then I'm not fixing just in the end, you know, if they're butted up to each other. I think you get a better fixing. There's another screw to go in there. I'm fixing them with these coach screws. I don't think they're exterior rated, but the wood will rot before they do. This fence is going to get double boarded, like this old one was. So there's going to be a lot of weight on it. That's why I don't want to fix into the ends. I've had to do here, but I put it to the back so that I'm not going into here where it might split. There's going to be a gate in here. I'll get these middle rails in, get it all straight. Get some more braces in these other posts then i can mix some concrete there's lots of bags there but there's some to do this little fence across here I like these screws because they've got a nice fat head and a flange on the head. Hopefully that'll hold better. To sink them in so that the boards, when they go on the face, they don't get in the way. I'll put a bit of creosote on them. But <coughs> I 
Right, I've got a choice to make on this, this end post. It's going to be a gate between there. I could fix this one plumb, but I'm going to sight it through. You see the concrete post and my wood post? So if you sight it through, then the door should shut properly, the gate should shut properly. If I put it straight, then the gate's going to end up twisted against that. I've got a choice. Do I put it in plumb? Or do I put it in twist within that other post? Hmm, don't know. I'm going to fix it there. It's not out of plumb a lot. Out by about that much, an inch. So I'm going to fix it at that. Put some stakes. I'm going to pound in like that. You want to fix them in the bottom because there's always going to be a little bit of movement in the top. So fix them in the bottom. I'm going to put another two in there. Get them straight. These ones should hold themselves. Right, they're all braced and plumb. These top rails look a bit crap, but. If I go around here, kicks up a bit at that end, a bit of garden, and then down to the gate. So I'll try and make the palings flow in some kind of even manner. Right, this is what they call 20mm ballast. It's a mixture of sand and gravel, regular Portland cement. And then we're putting two of these in to a third of that. That should give me a mix of about six to one. I was taught four gravel, two sand, one cement. Put the sand and gravel in first, otherwise the cement just sits, sticks to the inside. I wet it down, wet the barrow down first, of course. I like to make it quite wet, then I can just pour it, wheelbarrow it along, pour it into the holes. Then I know that it's going all the way around the post. Right, they're all done. Right, it's Monday now. Concrete's pretty hard. Windy and cold today. It's time to put these boards on using a little compressor. It works fine as long as it's on full. Gauge is broke, but like I say, it always lives on full. I've got 
along. D1 nail gun. I've had pass load guns in the past, but they don't like cold weather. Batteries run out, never have enough gas. I'm going to space them out. 50mm between each one. Put three nails in, first one goes in like that. Second one's going at an angle like that. Skew nail them, they call it. Help them hold it in. Same here. And I'll just work my way down. I'll put one of these, clamp it temporarily over the top so that I can get something to work up to. And I've got to try and straighten this mess up a little bit. These are 50mm nails, 50mm galvanised ring shank nails. Right, they're all in. Like I say, I'm going to take these braces out in a week or two. If the concrete cracks now, it'll never seal itself, so safe to leave them on. But I've sort of straightened out the top a little bit. Now I've got to board this side. half lap them like that got to be a little bit creative but like she says she wanted to post on this side because this isn't the side that she's looking at right there Ollie I'm about to push the boards together a little bit here and there pointless double boarding them if you can have gaps. Got a gate to make. Oh, this fence isn't any different really. Gonna put a timber on the wall there, screw that to the wall, then put a rail on, clamp a rail on, get me height, work out where I have to cut them, cut them off. I'm gonna put some treatment on, turn them over, put them in the holes. The holes are about about two foot deep ish. They don't have to go that deep. Right, I'm fixing the wall, this to the wall with same coach screws but number six. Number six is seven mil bit. Brown roll plugs. And you want sticking out about as much as the roll plug, the length of the roll plug. So, or oh, the modern version, modern synthetic version, probably. Right, they're all in place, ready for concrete. There's a gate going there, I'll cut it out, 
put a brace on all that way I haven't decided which way it's going to go yet rails are fixed on in place this timber has got the treated bit at the top cut bit at the bottom I'll put some treatment on that there's a cable in way I didn't run it to the floor because it'll just rot down there plus these only go to about there it's going to be a point on the top of these time for concrete right concreting got done I'm gonna do this gate now I put a brace on I put a coach screw in each end and at the moment they're still attached to these rails these two boards are fixed that one's fixed this one's just clamped on temporary the plan is put some more palings on cut that top one put a hinge on Cut that bottom one, put a hinge on, then I can free the gate, cut through these two, and it should swing then. I've got enough room to get the latch on that side. Put some more screws in it. Just need to trim these back a bit. Right, that's done. Cut them back a little bit. Braces off later. I would prefer it to have something to clap up against. That one now. Alright, that's it, finished. Simple gate, planks, brace, hinges on the other side. She doesn't want to see all this when she's in the garden. didn't nail to the brace because those rails will shrink and expand that direction and the planks that direction hopefully somewhat like even but nailing across there seems to add uh, a diagonal effect to it it twists the gate I think it does anyway I stopped doing it a while ago stopped nailing to the brace a while ago so don't do that you don't need to it's a brace not a support for the planks for the palings anyway fitted the old furniture back on had to make a couple of keeps out of some angle iron so she can lock it there's another bolt up here
I'll take the braces off at some point when I get my ass back here and this gate's done same again take the braces off later Those are the last fences I'm going to build, so sort of nice to have them on record to remind me not to do them again. <laughs>